how do you know the bubble is about to burst? The end is near. Because we, you know, we're old enough to have seen the booms and the busts, and I think we're cruising up to one of the biggest busts in world history. <laughs> I think we're in a massive bubble right now. And commercial real estate funded by private equity is going to be the biggest hit. Like Australia, I think they have 12 million cranes in the sky right now. It's crazy. You know, I'll, I walk up and down. Every single postage stamp of land is being built upon right now. And it's commercial. It's not like not a single family, a little guy building a little rental property. Right. These are very big pro- projects funded by low interest rates. And I understand the game. But at the, just before the bubble bursts is when all the f- fruits and fruitcakes come, the f- fruit flies come flying out there. What is one of the worst, you know, like 2007 was a great time because you all know it was going to come down because everybody was into flipping real estate, right? So what was one of the worst things you saw, Robert, during that period, just before the crash of 2008? <laughs> well, Russell, remember this. We were at an event, and there was a guy on stage. Those are, that's the word oh, he that's used. That's the word. I guarantee ah. this property will go up in value. We looked at each other and like, that's a problem. Yep. But I remember you talking about how when the, the gal at the checkout counter at the grocery store is giving you real yeah. estate advice, you know it's too late. She's just got a real estate license. <laughs> well, that, that's a clue. Yeah. That's a clue. Or when, or when people couldn't afford a $600 a month rent but they could go down the street and buy a $300,000 house for nothing down and no qualifying. Crazy. Yeah. And we're there right now. I think that you had people, remember the days in Las Vegas? Yeah. Yeah, these condo developers, and you would literally stand in line for the right to buy a property that was overpriced, and you would get in and you'd make your deposit, and the entire game was to control as many of those units as you could with the idea that down the road, even later in the same day, you could flip out of it and make money because of the way these things were being rolled out. And so it was all predicated around this insane uh, demand that had no basis in fundamentals or common sense, but it was like a feeding frenzy, and people got so caught up in it, they stopped thinking. They were like animals feeding and, and trying, to, trying to get their place in line. And when you, when you start seeing that, and it happens on the lending side, too, lenders become so desperate to loan. They, they lower the lending guidelines. They raise the L, uh, lower the down payment, raise the LTV. They make it easier and easier to get the loan without providing proper documentation. When you start seeing these things happen in the market, you know that it's this last flurry like a star that's about to you know I- I implode and that's in all markets and like the stock market's about i think we're about two years out from the stock market doing the same thing it's just going to get so exciting and everybody's going to jump and right are you in. are you seeing this happening today yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You you definitely see it. And the thing is, it can be great because you can take advantage of some of the easy lending to excess equity. You don't have to sell the property to right. get liquid and be ready for the next thing. But when you do, you just need to make sure you're paying attention to the cash flow. And that's the thing you guys have just been always the thought leaders on. So, Kim, what is, what's the worst pitch? <laughs> yeah, we don't have enough time. I, but I do remember those really fat brochures of these new, oh, yeah. right, new development. Here's this, this fancy, fancy brochure, and they're going to guarantee you an 8% return on your money. Nice. Guaranteed. Now, I'm like, how do you guarantee an 8% return. And that yep. 8%, they were counting on getting more and more people in to to buy so that those people would fund the 8% of the people. So it was kind of a Ponzi scheme. Yep. The funniest one I saw is because I'm, you know, the real estate guys, you guys know more about real estate. Kenny knows, Kim knows more about real estate than I do. But I do know shipping. So I was down with uh, Trump. This is just before the crash. And this guys had taken an old passenger liner. I go up to this hot young thing, you know, Nice brochure, nice hottie, you know. I said, tell me about this. Oh, and she's telling me about how this condo will float through the world and you can get on and get off and all this stuff. And I said, how old is the ship? She didn't know. A degree is in naval architecture. You see, a, a ship like those, you know, these big passenger liners, they should only exist for 15 years. Yeah. Useful lives are finished. So the only place that boat should have gone was not to a condo conversion. <laughs> it should have been sailed over to Taiwan and cut up for scrap to man to a new boat. But she was selling these condos, and these guys were lining up to buy condos so they could float around the world. And I said, holy mackerel, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. But my thing is, is the vanity of it. That's what upsets me. Well, and the me. other thing is that people just don't know. They don't know what questions to ask. They, they have don't. no idea. They just get sucked into the deal and sucked into the, <laughs> That's the you're going to make money. Yeah. And he got so excited listening to talk about real estate. He says, oh, good, I invested in real estate. 
And then it comes up and it shows Kim, Kenny McElroy, and I the property. He, said, he says, oh, it's a property in New Mexico. It's in New Mexico. Look, 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 look at the property. It's in New Mexico. And it's going to be really, really good. And we're looking at it. We go, uh, Richard, uh, that's not New Mexico. That's Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so thank God he got out of it. But oh, wow. do you know what I mean? Is that that's the vanity of it. They just think they want to get rich quick. Yeah. And let's, let's talk about our favorite tea guy on TV. I mean, I don't know if we should mention his name, but because we'll get sued by these guys, but he no. was a tiny little Vietnamese guy. And this was how many years ago? 20 oh, years ago. Oh, many, many, many years oh. ago. We met him 15 years ago, <laughs> long afterwards, in his little tiny office in Las Vegas. But he was the guy there for 15 minutes. He'd, he'd be on his yacht with all his pretty all women, the, pretty girls. the gold if I can champagne do it, glasses, you can do it, yes. dancing. This little, this little Asian yeah, guy yeah. with... Uh, you know, models and girls were like twice as tall as him and were built like, you know what, in little bikinis. And here he is on this yacht pitching a real estate deal. Yep. I kind of wondered who showed up at that s- seminar, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, though, you're making a great point about how to recognize a bad deal. When someone has to hype you up on getting rich and this extravagant lifestyles of the rich and famous, they're yeah. not talking about the fundamentals of the deal, the fundamentals of the market, what's going on in the economy. All that's boring. I totally get it, right? But if that's what they're relying on to get you to do the deal, they're trying to get you to an emotional state where your brain checks out and you will sign on the dotted line dreaming, hoping about something that isn't real and not looking at what is real and you should be paying attention to. And that's to. why you've got to get the financial education. you got to start small, take yeah. baby steps, know it's a process, it's going to take years, but you can become financially free with cash flow, but it's not it's not a quick fix. It's There's not, no s- like anything. Like you're not going to lose 20 pounds in two weeks, right? Yeah, right? It's the same thing. If you if you want to get weight off, it takes time. If you want to be healthier, it takes time. If you want to be wealthy, you can do it. Absolutely. It's just slow and steady wins yeah. the race. Yep. So, so what kind of programs do you guys put on the real estate guys? You know, for years we've taught seminars and things, but we're not really gurus. We're more journalists on like, our no, show. You guys right? are really fundamental guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think nuts our, and bolts, peanut and butter. You know, that's so. it. like we don't have a, a seminar seminar rarely without an attorney that speaks, you know, that's because you have to have that sobering side. Yes, you can make a lot of money, but there's a lot of work. Our, our primary thing that we teach now is real estate syndication, how to go bigger, Explain doing bigger what deals. A syndication is. So rather than buy something just in your own account, if you syndicate, you get together with other folks and some people put in the time and other talent, people's money. other people's money, some people put in the money. So a passive investor might put $50,000 in a deal and the syndicator or the sponsor or the the promoter is the one who finds the deal, vets the deal, puts together the team. Again, you have to be just as careful as in, in individual investing, maybe yep. more so. Yep. But there are attorneys involved. It's professional investors usually. But you also educate the, the investors. The Both people sides. that are ra- are your raising money from, you educate them about the deal, you bet. The, the pros, the cons, all of it, because well, you don't want you don't want stupid people giving you, you money. <laughs> that could be the, the most, as we say, the most expensive check you ever yeah. took is yeah. one that they don't understand. So exactly. you go through a process to make sure they understand, and you have to make sure it works for them, that it's in line with their goals and with their ability. And so it's not rocket science, but it takes time yeah. to figure it out. And it is, there's a lot of legalities around it, right? You're talking about securities laws, but that's not to scare people away. That's to say it's a another way that you can, in our world, collapse timeframes and be able to build wealth with real estate, passively or actively. Following to what Robert Kiyosaki was saying in the world of finance and investing, identifying market bubbles and understanding when they are about to burst can be a crucial skill. Renowned entrepreneur and author Robert Kiyosaki has provided valuable insights on recognizing the signs of an impending bubble burst. Kiyosaki emphasizes that a bubble typically forms when there is excessive market exuberance and overvaluation of assets. This can be seen when prices soar rapidly and reach unsustainable levels relative to their underlying value. When investments are driven by speculative fever rather than fundamental factors, caution is warranted. Another key indicator pointed out by Kiyosaki is the accumulation of excessive debt within the economy. When borrowing becomes rampant and credit is extended, without sufficient income to support it, the foundation of the economy weakens. Such conditions can lead to a potential burst as debt burdens become unsustainable. Speculative Investment Behavior Kiyosaki warns against a surge in speculative investment behavior, as it often precedes a bubble burst. When investors flock to a particular asset class solely driven by the fear of missing out, FOMO, 
Rather than conducting thorough analysis, it may indicate an inflated bubble waiting to pop. Bubbles are often characterized by extreme price volatility. Hiyosaki advises keeping a close eye on market movements and the magnitude of price swings. Rapid and significant fluctuations can be indicative of an unstable market condition, suggesting that a bubble could be on the brink of bursting. Market Correction or Crash Hiyosaki believes that market corrections or crashes can be a clear sign that a bubble is about to burst. When prices suddenly plummet, it may indicate the beginning of a downward spiral, with investors rushing to sell their assets, causing a collapse in prices and market sentiment. Robert Kiyosaki's expertise and insights provide investors with valuable guidance on recognizing the signs of an impending bubble burst. By closely monitoring market exuberance, debt levels, speculative behavior, price volatility, and market corrections, individuals can make more informed decisions about their investments. While predicting the precise timing of a bubble burst is challenging, Understanding these indicators can help investors navigate the financial landscape more effectively and protect their wealth. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more valuable contents. Thanks for watching.